Hello. Well, that was quick. <laughs> I did my first posting last night and already I have a number of questions and a lot of really positive, supportive comments from you guys. So thank you very much. Uh, a little bit surprising. I woke up this morning. I thought, okay, so we're doing this. Let's have fun. Um, just a couple disclaimers. I'm already sensing that um, I may not have time to get to all the fabulous questions that you're asking, but I will do my best. Um, please, please, please don't be offended if for some reason I, I don't get to your question. It's I have to just um, pick the ones that I think I have something worthwhile to talk about. Um, uh, but it's it will never be personal and I will do the best that I can. But I will honor the very first question that I received, which is from Kelsey Webb, or Kelsia Webb. Um, she is a student, and she's asked me three different questions, so I'll try and, and do this. The first, she says, as a young singer, people are always telling me to do this, to do that, sing this, and don't sing that. How did you learn to navigate the advice field? And in the end, who did, do you listen to the most for guidance? I listen to myself. At the end of the day, uh, we are the only ones that can determine how we will behave in this business, how hard we will work, uh, who we will listen to, and whose advice at the end we will follow. It's a bit overwhelming when you're a student because it seems like everybody else are the experts, and they are to a certain extent, your teacher, your coaches, at some point your agent, um, the people who are hiring you. They have a lot of experience and they have a lot of advice. and. There's oftentimes a, a lot of good sense to what they're recommending to you. However, you're going to get a lot of different opinions in this business. And a lot of people are going to throw um, a lot of differing analyzations of who you are and what your voice is. Really, at the end of the day, the only thing you can trust is your gut. If you're able to sort of clear away the interference and the noise and get down to what you really sense and in your, what your intuition is telling you, chances are that is probably correct. Now, it has to be an educated gut because the, the hard thing for us is that we take things so emotionally. You know, our voice is a part of us and what we have going on up here in our head is so intense and so uh, committed and so full of ideas. But sometimes what actually arrives and what comes out to the listener is is missing something or it's overdone or underdone. So we have to rely on those people's ears and expertise to a certain degree. But at the end of the day, you have to filter everything that you're getting, decide if you agree with it or not. Please, please, please always try and take that, um, your reaction, try and separate the emotion from it because the emotion can sometimes cloud our vision. And take your time with with making a decision have patience with yourself give yourself time to settle if somebody says oh that's the, the wrong aria maybe it's not working yet but maybe it will work in six months or two years second question is an opera career is expensive that is true what kinds of things did you do for money when you were just starting out and how did you make it to all the auditions and summer programs without becoming homeless eh. <laughs> I was a waitress I started waiting tables in high school, uh, my sophomore year in high school, so I was 15 or so. And then I continued through five, six years of college, and then even through three years of training in Philadelphia at the Academy of Vocal Arts. I, however, made a good decision in that I went into fine dining because you can make more money in fine dining. So I could work less evenings and still, you know, come home with enough money to, to pay the rent and pay some of the tuition and pay for voice lessons and coachings and all those things. Um, I don't know if everybody's cut out for waiting tables, but you have to find a job that, number one, doesn't tire you too much, that allows you some flexibility. And, you know, in the end, I actually think, I think about it now, I was in a way entertaining as a waitress and I was learning how to speak with people. Um, and often, you know, in the fine dining, it was some of the people that now I have to schmooze with you know at parties afterwards they've thrown the opening night party so it taught me some of those skills which I didn't have at all at the beginning a lot of people temp um, you just have to to be willing to put in the work and be a little bit tired 
and try and find the things that don't cost you too much on your throat. It's an uphill battle, I know, it's so hard, it's so hard, and the determination that it takes is, is quite a lot. Last question is a great one. What kinds of things do you think that we, the future generation of musicians, yay, should be working on to help protect the future of classical music? Who should we be talking to and what should we be prepared to deal with? Well, if, if I have the answer to that, I'll make a billion dollars because everybody in the field now from top to bottom is trying to figure out where classical music will go. Um, there's a great debate going on right now. I I don't have the link, but it's Gregory Sandow and somebody else. They're in a heated d blog discussion about whether classical music is dying or thriving. You know, there's an argument to be made that right now there's more classical music happening than ever. Um, yes, it's a crisis and money is hard to come by, but I believe so strongly in what we do that the, the necessity and the power for music will endure. I think we have to navigate the waters carefully. You know, I'm trying all these technological things here. I have mail again. Trying all these technological things, you know. Is it too much? Is it overkill? Somebody asked me that. I say, no, just keep with the blog. This is overkill. It might be. You know, if it is for you, don't watch the, the videos. And I'm trying it. It's an experiment. We'll see what happens. But I think we're crazy if we don't take advantage of the technology that we have and, and reaching out. But the thing I implore you is do your work. Become an excellent musician and be in it for the right reasons, which is, is to communicate to people, to um, whatever your reason is, you know. Um, if you're in it to get rich or to be famous or to have your ego stroked, uh, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> you're not going to be very happy in the business and it's going to be a real up uphill struggle, I think. But um, I think we have to be true to this art for me and we have to be very well educated and and work on our our capacity to communicate music with enthusiasm and integrity real musical integrity but at the same time we have to look forward we need composers writing music we need you out talking to young people education is the key we're starting to lose music in the schools so get in there and and pass on your passion for music and when you do it do it with joy and do it with enthusiasm don't ever do it with apology I think that's important because if you have this enthusiasm other people might see a special light come on and they might get hooked so Kelsey or Kelsey I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce your first name these are your three questions thank you so much I will get to the others as I can but as it is now I have to run back to rehearsal I have to get back to Idomeneo um, again, thank you guys so much. So far, so far, so good. It's kind of fun. Where's the stop button? Okay, ciao!